Here's what I liked. First of all, I thought the score was great. It's made by a composing duo called the Newton Brothers, and apparently they also recently did the score for Netflix's The Fall of the House of Usher. Now, going into the FNAF movie was actually really fun. In the intro to Josh's character, Mark, I noticed the attention to detail in characterization with the hole in his sock, and I thought the character was really brought to life with Josh Hutcherson's acting as well. I love the fact that early on in the film, there's a good use of the Save the Cat cliche where it goes wrong because he attacks an innocent man, but it's still effective in telling us what this character's values and what the story is going to be about. Now, I went into the movie not seeing the trailer, so it was all new to me. By the way, I also haven't seen a lot of FNAF content. I've never played the games, apart from some of the stuff that I've seen from the Theorist channel. And I've seen some people complain about this, but to me, the cutaway scenes to the woods are actually a bit refreshing and they don't really mess up the tune because honestly they're just as entrapping as the actual restaurant they're just as eerie and speaking of the theorists madpat's cameo is honestly so slick it's so freaking sick it fits so well i don't know how they were able to get it to fit so well it's probably the least cringe i've ever seen a youtuber bring in a movie is it the theater background whatever it is it, it was great in the same scene, we get another look at the lawyer, and he is a gem for as much screen time as he gets, a horrific and comedic gem. In the scene with the dream translating to real life and then him seeing that he was bleeding later, terrifying absolutely terrifying and then they sandwiched the meat cute with vanessa right in there so that you don't do the sense of the tone it's brilliant because probably they thought about it and were like having it happen any other time would might actually make this movie lose its sense of direction speaking of this little meat cute i saw vanessa's face and i was like hang on a minute love i've seen this face before i have imagine my surprise when i open imdb and it's the bird from you it's beck got me jumping out of the seat it did also she is also downright creepy in a way that i did not expect because like i said i saw her in you where she was the one being creeped on but fantastic acting and she she plays a cop who's really like focused on her job which is cool cool character that i feel like they didn't properly execute her backstory and the twist villain thing but this is definitely a kids horror movie kind of like jurassic park not spielberg quality and it does stay away from being gory but it's definitely scary and having all the actors you know lean into their more horror you know weird tense sides was actually a very good addition when the plot twist hits and he befriends the animatronics though i felt it was very weird i saw why they didn't move all the way into the horror theme at that point but that means that the first 15 minutes are way out of tune then at least that's what i thought until the double twist that hits and leads to the cruel realization that they want his sister and it's the kind of thing that really just pulls at your heartstrings because especially if you're really starting to like this character and your blood runs cold it was a very weird experience because at the same time i was also getting the feeling that this story is getting a bit convoluted but i cared which is important so i have to give them props for that and by the way later on in the movie they tried the face thing again i have to say it's still much scarier if they did it the way i said in the beginning of this video but now i see why they did it this way for instance in this scene it's to give him an easier chance to escape and manage to go of course and it's actually more effective than the first scene because i care about this character and we've already seen what this thing does and what it can do okay so getting close to the end we were facing prime horror story time with the way the monster chases him through the restaurant and the way the following scene is shot it was just brilliant i have to say though that the last half of this horror movie is much less horror movie and more 90s action hero with a bit of stealth mission going on it turns into a bit of like taken and it's weird to me because it's just not how i thought that this movie would go I respect it though, it's not unlike the end of Get Out where essentially he goes the purge on everyone. I respect the fact that the creators were trying to do something new and interesting, maybe, but if we're judging this movie, I would, if I said that this was a good move for this movie, that would be incorrect. And it really falls apart in the third act. It even uses the mothership trope from alien attack movies like Independence. So movie, you're quite fun and even properly brutal, I have to say, but you are conviction. But that's what I liked about this movie. Hate me in the comments. Tell me I haven't you know, read the game or whatever. And, and, and that's why. Anyway, here's what I disliked. And what I thought could have been improved. First of all, product placement. This is mostly a joke. It's just I don't get why the Sony logo was so bright in the beginning. Second thing is, I think that the dream sequences should have used a different shooting style. It, just to give it a different coat of paint and keep it interesting. You know, like change up the lenses, change up the focal length, change up the background blur, change up the color grading. You know, it was all very same. And I think that there's some weird inconsistency in the motivation for the villain left out. Why does he kill all the other security guards if the plan is just to complete his set of animatronics that are children? What did they do to him? Or do the animatronics just do weird, creepy, murdery stuff on their own? Because I kind of felt like they were toning down the horror theme so that 
they could justify the whole mothership thing where the animatronics later on essentially are free of this the, the main villain but if they're doing murderous things on their own this is probably something i don't get because i haven't played the games or whatever but this is a movie review the games are great most like what i've seen otherwise they wouldn't have such a large fan base if you're going to make a movie or any sort of adaptation of something that adaptation has to be able to stand on its own two legs as a great piece of media as a great part of that medium and the fourth movie i don't think it does look at some of the other weird things here and weird things i think that when weird things happen characters should react i don't get how he doesn't react to the training video glitching out into wherever and this is why the black people in horror movie memes are so prevalent i guess so yeah if i had to give this movie a score my imdb score is literally a 5 out of 10 because i i, I don't know i i gave interstellar like an 8 or 9 i, I can't give this more than five or six uh, i'm sorry but yes this movie is very cool and definitely go enjoy it if you're a fnaf fan you definitely will much like i enjoyed the mario movie i enjoyed this movie i enjoyed this movie like you know it was it was a good nearly two hours and if you're more of a cinephile just go in knowing that this is an oppenheimer but if you're open-minded it's a fun watch with at worst decent performances and dialogue very good cinematography i have to say dream sequences were a bit boring in that regard and it has a twisty plot that sometimes feels overworked and rushed especially in the third act but ultimately especially if you're watching this to introduce your friends or younger siblings to fnaf or watching with your family it's a decent halloween movie so uh, enjoy five six out of ten yeah